to receive glory and honor and power. It says, for you created all things and they exist because you created what you pleased. Since you are worthy, our Lord, our God. Let's see this morning, God, receive all honor, all glory, receive all worship, God. The Bible talks about how, how Mary washed the feet of Jesus with a, with a special perfume, an expensive perfume. Let that compare to your worship. Let your worship be that special, expensive perfume at the feet of Jesus. Let our song be a new song to Jesus. We're not just up here singing lyrics, singing words. We're worshiping a true king who is worthy of our worship church. We talk about how last year, a year ago today, we weren't here together. We were all separated, divided. But God has been so good. God has been so good.
that cross. Because of that cross, they spring. Because of that blood, they spring. Because of those nails that were put in his hands, they spring. Because of that crown of thorns, they spring. The word of God says, anything that has breath to be praised, first of all. If you have breath this morning, give him praise. For our God is not dead anymore. Amen. Our God is alive now.
lives celebrating and full, filled with your joy and peace and love, Father God, that comes from your Holy Spirit that is here in this place right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are alive and you are here with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Praise God. Welcome to Day Spring. You may be seated. At this time, we will have our children uh, go to Children's Church, and we have the nursery open for our toddlers, and we will have our announcements. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, Day Spring. Happy Easter to everyone. Our new series, I Want to Be Like Christ, starts next week. After Jesus rose on the third day and ascended into heaven, 40 days later the disciples started performing miracles, spreading the gospel and making disciples. Join us online or in person to discover how the disciples did it so that you too can be like Christ. These are exciting times at Day Spring Cypress Church. There are so many wonderful things happening here. We have officially started two Sunday services. Our new Sunday service times are 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Please register on our website under the events tab as we are still following pandemic safety protocols to ensure safety for everyone that wants to worship live at the church. You will still be able to join us online during our 11 a.m. service. We hope to see you soon. Men's Ministry Update on Friday night, April 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at church. We will have barbecue with the Brotherhood. All the men of Dayspring are invited to chow down on good food, fellowship, and the Word of God. Please contact Pastor Peter if you plan to attend. Mighty men of God, don't miss it. The Brotherhood is stronger and better together. 2 Corinthians 9.7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you for all your support, your words of encouragement, and your giving hearts, because it makes it possible for us to do our part in spreading the gospel. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you so very much. We hope everyone has a blessed week. Jesus loves you, and so do we. <laughs> Man, praise God. Um, thank you so much. Happy Easter, happy Re Resurrection Day, everybody. Man. We said it this morning, and Fernanda said it again a year ago. We were divided, separate, locked down, and look at what the Lord did. He brought us all back together again today, man. Praise God. Only God can do that, right? Amen. Praise the Lord, man. Thank you so much for being here today. So um, I see some new faces. So just look to your neighbor and say, welcome to Day Spring. <laughs> Praise God, man. It's just so good to see everybody, the Pena family, back all the way from San Antonio. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord for that. One of our elders, board members, one of the leaders here helped start the church. So thankful that he's, him and his family are back with us today. So thank you so much, everybody who's watching us online. Praise God. And uh, thank you all again for being here. You know, you could be many places, but you chose to be here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior today. And so we thank you so very much for being here. Has somebody told you this today? Jesus loves you. If nobody's told you or if nobody's told you that you've been loved, I'm telling you today, Jesus loves you. And the proof is the resurrection. So we're going to uh, finish up our Life on the Road series. And it, this road led us up to Easter Sunday. And the title of today's message is, It is Finished. Jesus' powerful words that he said from the cross. So thank you, Lord, for saying that. Thank you for what he's done and then the great Reverend Billy Graham, he started off one of his sermons. He says, who is this Jesus? Have you ever asked that question? Who is this Jesus? Everybody talks about him. 2,000 years later, we still talk about him. I can't escape him. Every time I do something I'm not supposed to be doing, somebody throws Jesus at me. 
Somebody's wearing a Jesus shirt. I see bumper stickers. I mean, who is this Jesus? And why is it such a big deal? Some of you, I'm sure, in your life have asked, man, did he really come to save me? Little old sinful me. Did he come and die for me? How could he really have died 2,000 years ago and shed all that blood for my sin? Did he save me? Why did he come? The answer to those questions, brothers and sisters, is yes. That's exactly why he came. To save us, to forgive us, to heal us so that we could have, so he could have victory over death so that we could have a life of eternity with him. Amen? So did you ask his question, did Jesus die to forgive my sins? Yeah. It was the Father's plan to send his Son to die for us. John chapter 3, verse 16. We'll put it up on the screen. Follow along with me in your Bibles. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Our God, Father, our Father God, sent his son to die for our sins. And you know, he did exactly that. And he didn't deserve the torture that he received. He didn't deserve that humiliation. He didn't deserve the whips. He didn't deserve people spitting on him, beating him, kicking him, pushing him, calling him names. He didn't deserve those things. We deserved those things for what we've done. But he knew that we couldn't take it to the cross. He knew that we couldn't have victory over death and sin. So he sent his one and only son here to do it and to take all of that for us. And so he did. So that was part of the plan. You see, our Lord did not deserve the crown of thorns. On the stations of the cross in the back, I encourage you to go and feel the crown of thorns that are back there. Every time I've touched them, it has pricked my hands and and they're sharp. And so I think about it, man, when they put that on him, they weren't nice about it. They didn't place it gently on him. When they put that crown of thorns on him, it caused him to bleed. So if you just barely touch that crown of thorns on the back over there, you'll see what I'm talking about. And for me, it was like, man, he put that on for me? Wow. That's love. He didn't deserve that, though. He didn't deserve the nails in his hands and in his feet. You know, he got nailed to the cross for your sins and for mine. And maybe that's not something that you want to hear. But brothers and sisters, I have to preach the truth from here. The gospel is the truth. It is the good news that Jesus Christ died for your sins and mine. He didn't die because he had nothing better to do. He died because he wanted us to be with him forever. So that's the truth. Our sin caused this to happen. He said, man, but I wasn't around 2,000 years ago. My name isn't Adam or Eve. You're right, it wasn't. And we're still paying for that today. Yes, we are. But God finished it on the cross. That's why the title of today's message is, It Is Finished. And you know that cross, man, it was the worst form of torture at that day and time. The cross, they put people on that cross and they hung them there because it was causing fear. It was a symbol of fear. It was a symbol of punishment. But I'm going to tell you just how great our Jesus is because he transformed that symbol to mean something different. He turned it from a symbol of fear and torture and punishment to a symbol of hope, to a symbol of forgiveness, and to a symbol of salvation. Are you with me? Let's give a hand clap to God for that. (laughs) Only Jesus can turn something so horrible and make it so beautiful. And that's exactly what he did with that cross. People wear it on decorations, but do we really understand what it is? Jesus transformed it. The good son is who he is. Man, he finished the work of the good father, and he finished that plan on the cross. Go with me in your Bibles, if you can, to John chapter 19, verse 30. So here it was. Jesus was, he allowed himself to be rested. We talked about that on Good Friday. He was beaten. He was nailed to the cross. He's hanging there. People are making fun of him, saying, if you're, if you're so bad, if you're the king of all things, why don't you come down and prove who you are? And what did he do? He prayed for them. Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Man. And then just as a, the great son that he is, he sees his mom down there, and he sees John, the beloved, right next to her, and he says, son, behold your mom, mom, behold your son. What he's saying is, John, my beloved disciple, take care of my mom. Mom, this is a, the son that's going to take care of you. He took care of his mom while he was dying on the cross. I mean, do you understand this? With your last breath, when you're bleeding to death, here he is, Jesus is saying, take care of my mom, take care of my son. 
I mean, take care of my mom? Man, that's a loving God. So John chapter 19, verse 30, it says then, after that, then he said he was thirsty, so they gave him some sour wine. That was to prolong the pain, not to numb the pain. And it says when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he released his spirit. The last three words before he died on that cross was, it is finished. This is the greatest story ever told. Amen. Ever. There's nothing that comes close to this. But you know it doesn't finish right here. Oh man, it continues. And it's continuing right now. The greatest story right there is really just beginning. It doesn't finish right there. See, because early on Sunday morning, which is where we are right now, this is Sunday morning, the good news of Jesus Christ was just beginning. So over 2,000 years ago, Jesus' mom, Mary, and some other ladies, they go and they're going to put perfume on him. This is custom of the time when someone had died because, you know, the body starts smelling after a while. So they walk in and he's not there. When you read the Gospels, you'll see Mary's like, where is he? Where, where is he? Where have, you, where have you taken him? I think about a mom. Hey, man, you just witnessed your son, your child, being tortured to death. And I guess for all you moms, you know how hard it is just to see your kids go through anything. But can you imagine them going through that? And all of a sudden, you walk in and he's not there. And when he's not there, man, she's like, hey, what have you done with my son? Where is my son? Where is he? Depending on which gospel you read, you'll see angels there. And this one here, you'll see that there were two angels that said, and we go to Luke chapter 24, verse 5. Follow along with me in your Bibles. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. And then there were two men in there. And the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? <laughs> in verse 6, he says, he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look to your neighbor and say, he is risen from the dead. Imagine the joy they must have had. All the people there and the mom. I just had my last supper with my Savior. My son, Mary's looking at this and saying, man, where is he? I just saw him die. And all of a sudden they say, hey, why are you looking for him? There's only dead people here. He isn't here. He's alive. Oh, my gosh. I imagine Mary just wanting to burst out, man, of her skin and go and run and tell everybody. See, it's a joyful time. Today is a celebration, brothers and sisters. Today is a victory that God had, that Jesus had over death in the cross. And this is exactly what's happened. He says this, listen, listen to this. He says, remember what, you, what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that on, he would rise again on the third day. So these angels are telling the women, do you remember what he said? And man, I got a picture. If it was me, I would just be like, yes, I remember now. He was constantly telling us he was going to die, and now he's not here. Man, I got to go tell everybody. This is a celebration. This isn't something to put my head down under. I mean, put under the covers. No, this is something I need to tell everyone. You know that Messiah you've been waiting for? He's alive. If I was Mary, the mother, I'd be like, that's my son. Yeah, that's my son. If I just was, I know that guy. I know that guy. He rose from the dead. See, death could not contain him. The grave could not hold him, right? Because, oh, man, the light of God was shining down on our Savior. Amen. Praise God. That rock was rolled away. Oh, my gosh. And there stood our glorious Lord and Savior in victory, saying, yes. It is finished. It is done. I have overcome the grave. When we hear this story and we read it, people don't really take it to heart. And I'm going to tell you why. Because some people act like he's still dead today. Man, he is not dead. He is alive as he was then as he is right now. In 2,000 years, if we're still around, he's going to be alive then again. He is alive and him being alive means that all the stuff that you've done, he's forgiven. He's taken it to the cross. He's nailed it there. All of those things, he has healed it. He has delivered you from those things. He has conquered it. He has stepped down on that enemy. He has crushed that head and said, I am alive. I am the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Look and put your belief in me is what Jesus is saying. Do you put your belief there? Or do you walk around defeated, man? No, I can't believe it. I, credit card bill's late again. I'm having problems again. Those kids, they just don't listen. My teachers, my spouse. 
I'll never get over this sickness. You see, then you're looking at the, you're just looking at the cross. You're not seeing what he did after the cross. You're staying on Good Friday. And it was a Good Friday, but today is Resurrection Sunday. This is where we got to start living today, brothers and sisters. Resurrection Sunday. Man, without Jesus, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whew. Without Jesus, I can't explain the resurrection. Listen, I can't prove it. I can't put a spreadsheet together and prove it scientifically in, in a laboratory. I can't prove it. But I can tell you this, and this I know for sure, man. It's by faith that I have seen miracles happen. Yes. It's by faith that I've seen people healed right here at this altar. It is by faith that I have seen lives transformed, relationships restored, that I have seen people transformed completely from who they were before. And Jesus wants to transform you. Will you let him? Will you open up your heart to him? Will you confess him? Will you say that you believe? Because, brothers and sisters, it starts with your faith. Without faith in Jesus, you're lost. There's no way around it. You're sad. You'll live a life of regrets. And if you ever get to the point at your last breath, man, you're going to feel defeated and you're going to say, I wish I had more time. You see, but with Jesus, oh my gosh, with Jesus, man, you have the ultimate victory because you have salvation. You know where you're going. With Jesus, with your faith in Jesus, victory and salvation is yours. And some people look and say, man, well, you know, I do have a lot of problems. And I'll come to the Lord once I fix myself. You will never be able to fix yourself. Ever, 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 ever. Say that to your neighbor. You will never be able to fix yourself. But Jesus Christ can. Man, and when he fixes you, it's permanent. It is eternal. Don't you want that? Let me share this with you. It's a little secret. Write it down if you need to. What you want to fix on your own, he already fixed on that cross. <laughs> Man, so why do you want to try to do something he already did? When he said it was finished, he meant it. Jesus doesn't lie. His words are truth. His words spoke life, spoke the world and the universe and everything into existence. So when he says it is finished, he means it is finished. Your immorality, your sexual sin, your thoughts, your anger, your unforgiveness, your lack of mercy, whatever your sins are, he's already finished it and nailed it to the cross. It's done, man. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and who he is. But you might still want to fix it on your own. You might say, yeah, man, I can't, you know, because I'm, so, I'm too bad. I need to fix my, just make myself a little bit cleaner before I come to the Lord. Listen, he knew how dirty you were when he died on the cross for you. And he knows that if you try to clean yourself up, it won't work. You'll just rub it and rub it, but you'll still see the stain. But when he rubs it out, it's gone. It's washed white. It's so clean. He's washing you clean with his blood. You just have to follow him and believe in him. The Apostle Paul, like so many people here, say, man, I was the worst sinner of them all. You don't know the things that I've done. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you don't know the things that I've done. And you don't know all the things that everybody in the world has done. But still, John 3, 16, he said, for God so loved the world. That's everybody in it, past, present, and future, sin and all. And still he died on that cross. See, the good news is, that Jesus defeated the world's worst, and he gave us his best. What was his best? His body, his blood, his Holy Spirit. And you know what he gives you when you believe in him? A new life. You can't buy it. You can't manipulate your way to get it. You can't pretend that you have it. No, it comes from him. But do you believe he's alive? See, because if you believe he's dead, he can't give you nothing. What dead thing can give you anything? Nothing. Nothing. But if something is alive, can he give you all of those things? Yes. If it's alive and Jesus is, he gives you hope. He gives you salvation. He gives you this new life that's in Christ. Some of you guys are begging for a new life. Some of you are wondering, man, I, I don't know where I am, and I fell away from God. And maybe you have fell away for so many different reasons. You can say, man, the church I was at did that before, the pastor I was at, or my parents, or my job took me away, or just my own sinfulness, or the world itself, or the addictions, or whatever you want to say that you fell away from the Lord, but you've come today with just a little bit of hope, just this much. Man, that's all the Lord needs. And he will kick that door wide open. He'll just blow it open and say, look, I'm here. 
That's Jesus, that he's alive. He says, I'm the one that wants to transform you. I'm the one that wants to change you and give you this new life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, It is impossible to, believe, to please God without faith. Anyone who, who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely or who diligently seek him. Guys, we have to have faith in what he did. And you may not be able to describe it or explain it. That's okay. This is where faith comes in. You sat in the chair knowing or believing that it was going to hold you. And it did. So why wouldn't you believe in this? You're here because you believe something. Maybe somebody dragged you. That's okay. You're going to get the, the word of God inside of you today. Are you ready to come to Jesus? Are you ready to believe that what he did was strong enough to forgive you and your sins? Are you ready to believe those deep, dark secrets that you have that you've not shared with anybody that he forgave on the cross? Are you ready to seek him? Because he's ready like this with you. He's waiting for you, arms wide open. He's already nailed everything to the cross that you could have ever done or that will ever do. But do you believe that? Do you believe that he defeated it and stomped it out there? Because he did. Jesus' words, when he said, it is finished, is the most powerful blessing you will ever hear in your life. It is finished. That means you don't have to do anything because you can't do anything to get into heaven. There's nothing you can do. You can have a clean house. You can never curse again. You can never pick up a cigarette or liquor or whatever. You can never look at anybody weird. And still, you can't make it into heaven just by doing that. You can serve the homeless. You can feed the homeless. You can give money. You can do, man, you can do all of those things. And still, the gates of heaven will be a dot to you because you cannot get close enough. You have to believe in Jesus and the blood. You have to believe in the cross and what he did on the cross. There is no other way. Yes, praise God. The words, it is finished, man, these are words of victory, and they come directly out of the mouth of our God, the Son of the living God, the Son of, the, the son of kings, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the master of everything, and those words came from him. Believe in them. What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. Maybe you have to lose your old life that was full of stress, full of doubt, full of fear, full of chaos. Does anybody want, here want a life of love, joy, and peace? How about patience, kindness, goodness? Anybody here want to live a life of faithfulness? How about gentleness and self-control? The fruit of the Spirit, man, that's yours when you believe in Jesus Christ. Those are the things that come out of you, that flow out of you. Do you want that type of life? You must accept him as your Lord and Savior. It won't be easy. There will be some things that he's going to deal with, but that's okay because he will deal with them with you. Jesus finished what he came here to do. The good father gave him a work to do, and he finished it. Will you accept that? If you accept it, then your eternal destination is in heaven. Jesus accepted you at your worst in your darkest moments, and he still wants you. And maybe you look and you think, man, but how could he possibly want me? He does. Sin and all. He knows how broken you are. He created you. He knows what you've done. He's not saying, oh, that's too bad. Oh, gosh, I, can't. I wish you wouldn't have done that because I didn't, do, didn't take care of that on the cross. That's not what our Lord said. The Lord said, I know what you've done. I know what the whole world has done. I know how many times you've done it, and still I defeated that on the cross. There is nothing more powerful than the blood. When you accept that Jesus wants you, then today is a day for you to confess. Some of you have come here today lost, wondering, does God still accept me? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let me let you in on a little secret. What's happening today around the world in all these Christian churches everywhere over the last couple of days Millions of people are giving their life to the Lord for the first time. Millions. Be one of them. You want to be part of a group, a family, an army? Be one of the ones giving your life to the Lord for the first time. Let me let you in on another secret. There are millions, probably even more millions of people rededicating their life, recommitting their life again to the Lord, maybe for the hundredth time because they know that they've messed up. Why don't you be part of that army? Become part of the family of God. 
He's like this, man. His arms are wide open on the cross. They were like this, and it's big enough to hug you and everybody else in the world, past, present, and future. Your loving Father, he knows what you've done. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Man, it doesn't have to be more difficult. There's just something about it when you confess with your mouth and you take that step of faith. You're telling yourself, you're telling God, and you're telling everybody else that my old life is done. Man, I was so proud of the people this morning, man, who did that. Praise God for the first time, the people, man, I could see it, the tears in their eyes. I could see the lump, hear the lumps in their throat. I could see what was happening. And I was so thankful that they confessed Jesus as their Lord and Savior for the first time. And you might say, well, what do I get saved from? Do you get saved from hell? Absolutely. You get saved from the enemy? Yes. And you get saved from yourself. You know, if you leave it up to yourself, you're going to go to hell? Because yourself is going to go to the opposite way or some different way than what God has for you. But when you give yourself to the Lord completely, confess him as Lord and Savior, then he will lead you to heaven. He will lead you to salvation. You know, as I was putting this message together, I had to go alone and get quiet and get on my knees. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to share with your people? What do you want me to tell them? So as I'm on my knees, I want you all to think about this. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. It was a tender time with me and the Lord, man, because I didn't know what to say. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. I want you to, I want to give you glory. I, I want to praise you. I want the people to know. So I said, Father, what do you want me to tell them? So as your eyes are closed right now, everybody, don't worry about who's to the left or to the right. Just focus on these words here because this is what he told me in this small voice it was a peaceful voice but it was powerful because it was so loving this is what he said this is what he said he wants us me to tell you he's speaking directly to each one of you he says i love you so much i sent my son to die on the cross for you and then he said jesus defeated death so that you can have eternal life with me and the last thing he told me to tell y'all was if you confess and believe in your heart in Jesus that you will be saved man I tell you man when I felt that just keep your eyes closed for just a moment don't just those are words are for each one of us here and so if you've never given your life to the Lord I'm asking you to raise your hand right now for the first time if you've never given your life to the Lord raise your hand if you've never publicly confessed that Jesus is Lord and Savior of your life just raise your hand nobody's looking it's just you right now if you came in here saying Lord I've been away from you long enough and I want to recommit my life to you and I'm also asking you just raise your hand praise God Praise God. We're going to open up the altar up here and ask the prayer partners to come up with us. Now, me and Ivan will be up here on the sides here. If you've never given your life to the Lord and you want to pray with somebody, we're going to pray with you. If you want to recommit your life, then we're inviting you to come up. For everyone else, if you have anything that you want to deal with with God personally, then the altar is open to come up. Listen, don't let pride Don't let embarrassment and don't let guilt keep you from God's promises. His promise of salvation is for all of us. This altar is open, so we're inviting you. If you come up, all we're asking that you do is just put your mask on, but we will be praying for you and praying with you during this next song. Savior of the world was fallen. The 
His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him Heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, the war on death was waged, the power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. Was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? And our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. And forever He is God. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King.
bow down and we close out in prayer. I know that some of you are dealing and struggling with things. Man, take it to the cross. And when you take it, leave it. Don't take that baggage with you. He didn't die so you could take it again. It doesn't mean that you care more if you're a warrior or stressed out. What that means is you're, we're not relying on him. He didn't die for nothing on that cross. He died so that we could place our faith and our trust in him. And he will take care of it. He tells us to bring our burdens to him. Some of you may be struggling with sin in the past, things that you have done. And you think, man, the Lord, can he really forgive me for that? Yes. Over 2,000 years ago, he bled to death to forgive you for that. Believe it. Make yourself believe it. Tell yourself to you believe it. A hundred times a day if you have to. But believe it. It's by faith that we accept the gift of the cross. It's by faith that we live in the blessings of our Savior. As children of God, we have an inheritance. When we believe our final destination is in heaven with Him, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. Do you get that? All things will be new, all things. You might look and say, yeah, but I don't know when I'm going to go. It's okay, none of us do. But while we're here, let's be here together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're looking for a family, a home church to be a part of, we invite you to be a part of us. We're not a perfect church. There isn't one. It doesn't exist. I think Billy Graham said it best. If you walk into a perfect church, it immediately becomes imperfect when you walk in. Praise God. Thank you, Billy Graham, for putting it so easy for us to understand. Here's the thing, we serve the perfect one, Jesus Christ. In this church here, we invite you to be a part of our family. We're gonna love you. We're gonna show you how to be merciful and forgiving if you're not. We're gonna show you how to share the word of God and that's what we're gonna do is go out and do what God has called Dayspring to do. Not what everything everybody else is doing, but what God has called us to do. I hope you felt welcome here. I hope you felt the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord because that only comes from His presence. That's the Holy Spirit. We can't do it. No matter how loving my wife is or our greeters are, we cannot create that environment. Only the Holy Spirit can. So if you want to be part of our family, we'd love to you to be a part of us. Let's continue as I close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence here today. I thank you for blessing every one of us that are here, Lord. I pray that their minds and their hearts will be open to you like they never were before. I pray that they look at their spouses father god with love like they never have before to their children like they never had before to their friends like they never had before father god to their brothers and sisters like they never had before father i pray that they would look at their circumstances and their trials and speak life to them by saying it is finished jesus finished that and destroyed that on the cross i pray that we walk out of here with our heads held high our chests out and our shoulders back because we belong to you, God, we are your sons and daughters. Thank you, Jesus, that you protect each one of the people that are here, all our children that are outside. I pray that no sickness may enter this place, Father God, your house of prayer, and no sickness may leave. I pray, Father God, for your loving comfort and your arms to surround them, and I pray that tonight, Lord, everyone that's here will lay their head on their pillow and sleep in peace. Some of you have needed peace in your life. Ask God tonight. Lord, give me your peace that you give and watch how you're going to rest tonight. I believe that the Lord will help you to rest deep sleep tonight. Thank you, Father, for the love that you show us. Thank you for this resurrection day that we recognize what you did. Lord, we couldn't do it, but you could, and so that's why you're here, and that's why we serve you, Lord. Thank you, God, for sending your only son here to die for us on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the salvation that you give us. Thank you for the faith that you have put inside of us. Thank you for this place that you have given us to worship, Father. All of our servants that are here, that are serving, Lord, all the people that are here and that are watching online, the people that are here, the people that are right now, Lord, giving you their life and giving you their heart. I pray you would speak life into them right now. Give them the strength they need to do what you're, you're telling somebody to do something right now, to break free of that relationship. Give them the strength, Father, they have it.
The strength is in you. Break free from whatever it is. Those addictions, that thing you're, think, you're thinking about giving up, give it up. I don't know who it is, but somebody's dealing with something over here. Let it go. Take it to the cross. He finished it. He nailed it to that cross. You might think you can't do it, and the answer is you can't, but Christ can through you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for blessings over everyone here for the rest of this week. I thank you, God, that you help us to help them, Lord. Thank you for all that you do, for the wonderful God that you are. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Let's give a hand clap.